Speaking of helping everybody, everybody who's anybody on the South Plains has been to the Science Spectrum, and we have James Neesmith here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. That was kind of an interesting tie in You like that tie segue? There. Yeah, there? segue. Yeah, yeah. Well, I try. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks for having me. Some fun things going on. All right. You guys are really into the pirates these days, which yeah. I like because I happen to be a Lubbock Cooper pirate. So. Oh, yeah. My family as well. <laughs> but, yeah, we do. We still have the Pirates and Treasure Exhibition. We have a brand new film at the Omni Theater, and then we have an event coming up here in about a week and a half or so. Okay, tell us about that. Hmm. Well, we've got uh, the brand new film is called Living in the Age of Airplanes in the Omni Theater, and it's a Nat Geo, National Geographic produced film. And so obviously, when, you know, it's high quality when it's done uh, by Nat Geo. Mm-hmm. And then it is narrated by Harrison Ford. Okay, now is, is this... Is this about airplanes, or is this about Harrison's Ford record of crashing airplanes? <laughs> it is not, Tom. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Thank I appreciate you. that quite a bit. I, I, um, <laughs> no, actually, Nat, Nat, uh, Harrison Ford did narrate it, was going to do quite a bit of promotion for the film, but obviously with his, his wreck, is not able to do that. Um, but it is not and he speci- voiced this before his he own He voiced it before accident. it. That's correct. That's right. <laughs> and um, But it is not necessarily a film about, as funny as it sounds, about – Airplanes, meaning it's not about the history of airplanes or the history of aviation. What it really is is a film about how the airplane has changed the course of human history. Hmm. We have, um, depending upon um, you know which uh, information you want to look at, but human existence being around for thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands of years, that up until, obviously, the invention of the airplane, human travel was a slow process. And it took, it even took time, um, months to travel, obviously, even on ships and all of these different things. And it, some estimates it took 10,000 years for man to move from Africa and the Middle East, where the origins of man are, all the way to the farthest place that man finally made it, which was the tip of South America. So just walking and migration and finally people moving. And going, it took 10,000 years. Well, now, because of the airplane, we can be there in a day. Right. Basically, that you can get anywhere else on the face of the planet in a day. And then, of course, uh, with the advent in the last 50 years of modern jet aircraft and all of that kind of thing, especially moving into the space age, how life is not like it was at all. So we have gone from man being pretty isolated and for the most part living within a 20 or 30 mile radius up until the last couple hundred years for most people, other than if you moved continents to try to get away from whatever political circumstances or whatever you were in. But most people stayed and lived in a pretty small isolated area. So mankind is nothing like it was several thousand years ago. And we have this invention called the airplane that is the closest thing in some senses to like a time machine because it's not like it was human existence is nothing like it has been. Wow. That's fascinating. You know, I remember when my grandparents went on an airplane for the very first time, Mm -hmm. I was a little girl and they were very nervous. Absolutely. Right. And, and and the, the film also talks about how, um, going on airplanes has also changed where now, for many of us, it's almost an inconvenience, or it used to be this amazing, wondrous thing. Right. But that that's starting to change as well as technology changes and some advancements are made. Mm-hmm. One of the things the film also does, it lets you travel all over the world. It, it's also sort of a travel and destination film, lets you go and travel to these amazing, exotic places. So even if you're not really all that overly excited about airplanes themselves, you'll really be interested in these amazing, exotic places you get to go to. Yeah, you know, the South Pacific, and you get to go to Antarctica, and you get to go to Africa, and you get to go to all these places that they show you and take you. And one of the really cool scenes in the film is it also looks at how we use airplanes to transport, obviously, goods and products all over the world within a matter of time. Mm-hmm. And it shows there's amazing scenes showing in real time, and they have a counter going on screen where they're harvesting roses in Kenya. And roses have a shelf life from the moment they're cut of about two weeks, and then they're dead. So they cut them in Kenya, and they count the clock, and they package them up, and they ship them, and they get them to the airport. And they, I didn't know this about flowers, but apparently a huge flower market, most of the world's flowers go to Amsterdam. And they go to Amsterdam, and there are these different companies that receive millions and millions of flowers a day. And then they're repackaged and rebundled and reshipped for all the different companies that sell flowers, fresh-cut flowers anyway. And then they're shipped out all over the world. So there's this scene 
where you follow along with the flowers and then they go to Amsterdam and they finally make it to Alaska and they go from summertime in Kenya and three days later they're on someone's table in their home in Alaska in wow. three days. <laughs> and we don't cool. think about how all the things that go on behind the scenes, but that, not just flowers, but any kind of product and good that really we're a global society. We're no yeah. longer a singular society. Right. We're a global international world and products and goods travel all and what we think of as our life today exists mainly because of our ability to transport and ship these goods all over the world. You know, That's those true. are, those are aspects of, uh, <clears throat> of air travel that you really don't take into consideration. You, those are things we just take for granted. That's right. right. <laughs> Absolutely. Interesting. So okay. Used to it now. Uh, before we shift gears, uh, I do have a family four pack of tickets to living in the age of airplanes. If you'd like to ring us up, pick a call between one and 1000. Mm-hmm. Oh man. 780. No, we're not going to do that. Four. Caller number four is seven seven zero five seven nine zero. Yeah, and if you're going to go on the seven hundreds, you should have went seven ninety, not seven hundred eighty something. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> anyway, uh, what did we say? Caller four, four seven seven zero five seven nine zero. Get the family four pack of tickets. Okay, uh, real quick, wanted to um, ask you about this or bring this up because we had talked about this, and I don't think we talked about it on the air. I think we talked about it off mic, but uh, just got a text from our mom on the street, Nancy Smith. She's always sending us information about, you know, she's like so, super mom, always finding the cool stuff for kids. Science Spectrum is having a pirate school Saturday, May 9th, promotes polite behavior and social cur- and social courage in a swashbuckling way. Ha ha, funny. Didn't know that James was going to be here this morning. Perfect timing. Absolutely. Yep. To go along with our Pirate Treasure exhibition that we have now through the end of May, we're bringing in a special vaudeville performer. And uh, this guy is world-renowned. It's kind of funny, but these things that we find and bring in. But it's, his name is David Engel, and he is a vaudeville performer. He's out of the New York area, and we're bringing him in. We're flying him in to come uh, do some shows on April the – excuse me, May the 8th and 9th. He'll be here for school groups on the 8th. But Saturday the 9th he'll be here, and he's doing two shows on that Saturday. One thirty and 3.30, and it'll be at the Science Spectrum. And he does a one-man show where he's obviously dressed like a pirate, talks like a pirate, teaches kids to talk like a pirate, act like a pirate. <laughs> it's a funny comedy show. But there is, besides all the funny hijinks and craziness that he does and costumes that he wears and silliness and dancing and jumping around, he actually does talk about social awareness and morals and behavior and even anti has an anti bullying message. So there's Good. just a wonderful message that goes along with it. That's great. Sort of, for, it's really geared for those kids in sort of the four to twelve year old range. So it's a wonderful show to bring the whole family out to. Pretty inexpensive. Uh, you can get tickets for that for three dollars for children and four dollars for adults. And about an four dollars. It's about an hour show at the Science Spectrum Live Show. So if you want to go to a live theater type performance that's a comedy type show that the whole family will just be rolling and, and laughing at having a good time it's it's a good event i'm always interested in the actor and so i looked him up and david engel is he's he's the bomb yeah award-winning he, yeah, entertainer this isn't yeah this, this isn't just some guy that just does this he right. travels literally mm-hmm. all over the world international festivals nice. and events yeah. big time performer he is all right uh before you go james uh back for the home show you'd given us uh a bunch of admission coupons for Science Spectrum that are good for uh, pirate exhibits. So essentially, if you do a regular admission uh, to the Science Spectrum, then you have um, to the to the regular pirates exhibit. Um, you or if you buy an Omnitech, you get a free admission to the regular pirates exhibit. Still have a few of those left. If people would like to come pick those up, they're at our studio's office, forty four thirteen eighty second Street, third floor. And you can just walk in there; they're free. And uh, thanks to you guys for did, doing that. Did we say when private uh, pirate school is with David? May Engel? 9. Saturday, May the Saturday, 9th. Saturday, May nine. One thirty okay. and three thirty are the shows. Yeah. Thanks, right. thanks for coming in, Absolutely. James. Appreciate it, James Neesmith, Science Spectrum.